Fox News contributor, former White House press secretary. Yeah, we didn't show all the parts where, I mean, it just it kind of went off the rails. Not even sure why. You know, the president said he had no regrets about taking classified information home Oof. with him. Um, in this case, the congressman's last name is Beyer. I can't help but wonder if now he has Beyer's remorse. Oh, you're funny. Uh, it, it, you know, all politicians do slip up on names, but Joe Biden does it all the time. And the issue isn't, is he stupid? The issue is we all know with any 80-year-old, is, is he with it? Does he forget things? This happens to people at that age. It's part of aging. And that's what he refuses to countenance. Yes, he can string some sentences together, but he also forgets, gets lost in mid-sentence. Every time he walks, he looks ancient. He's got an age issue, and it's not inappropriate to say that. We all know it and can see it with our own eyes and hear it with our own ears. Look, I don't know what the reason was, but minor incursion that Putin took as, oh, I guess they wouldn't mind if I invaded Ukraine. Not saying he did it because the president said that, but when you describe it like that, it does make you wonder how long it's been going on that the president just can't separate what he should say from what comes out of his mouth. And, and it's the regular old gaffes. Those are the gaffes that you typically see with the elderly. And do you really want a president of the United States to be at that age? And that's a huge issue. And he's going to be 82 when he runs for re-election. Look, the silver lining of the fact that he looks like he's going to run for re-election is I don't think there's anybody I'd rather run against than 82-year-old Joe Biden. Speaking for all Republicans right there, I, I can't think of anybody who wouldn't want to run. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this is a new New Hampshire poll, and they agree with you, by the way. 2024 presidential primary poll in New Hampshire has Biden trailing Pete Buttigieg, the president down five percentage points now from Pete, Mayor Pete from Indiana, tied with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Your take. Yeah, make no mistake, the Democrats want to defeat Donald Trump, and they'll do anything. They will unify and rally to defeat Donald Trump and whoever the likely Republican nominee is. But what you are seeing is a yearning inside the Democratic Party for a generational change. And it goes back to what we were just talking about, Harris. There is a huge segment of the Democratic Party who looks at, the, at Joe Biden and says he's just too old. It's time for younger leadership. They just did that in the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. and now I think they want to do that as well in the presidency. But Joe Biden is going to stand in the way of that. And he needs to have a very strong year this year. Otherwise, he is going to be vulnerable in a primary at the end of this year. Yeah, we'll see how the State of the Union, you know, shakes out. He could still be trying to explain why he's still the only one with all the classified documents that are marked top secret. That, those are the ones that count. Republicans are loving it, but it's giving Democrats the blues. The Cook Political Report with this headline for its first 2024 Senate race ratings. Democrats are on defense. 23 of their seats are up for re-election on or open. Just 11 Republican seats are up. The GOP is feeling pretty good about flipping four states and taking the majority. Kirsten Sinema in the swing state of Arizona, Sherrod Brown in Ohio, John Tester in Montana, and Joe Manchin in West Virginia. Trump won those three states in 2020. The Republican Senatorial Committee getting an early start with what an ad calls Maserati Mansion. Italian sports car, luxury yacht, more than $1 million spent on fine dining. Life's very good for Democrat Joe Manchin. While West Virginians get stuck with higher prices, smaller paychecks, and open borders. Ooh, it's starting early. Yeah, that's basically a he's not one of us. He's out of, out of touch ad. Um, but let me give a caution for Republicans. History says that 2024 should be a powerful year for Republicans in the Senate based on just the demographics of what states are up and how many Democrats are up compared to how many Republicans. But history also said Republicans should have had huge gains in 2022. True. We're in a different political era. And that is in part the focus on a referendum on Joe Biden, but it's still a referendum on Republicans. It's a referendum on Donald Trump. It's a referendum on whether people are scared of Republicans. And therefore, even though they would have been inclined to vote against Democrats, they won't. They'll vote Democrat. So as much as the landscape is good for Republicans historically, I'm throwing historical measures out the window for this upcoming cycle. We don't know what we're heading into yet, and it's going to depend tremendously on who's at the top of the ticket.
Yeah, that's really great advice. Uh, and, and you know, we don't know what's going to happen between now and then and who will be in charge of getting us out of those sticky wickets coming, Democrats or Republicans. Great to see you always so thoughtful. Ari right, Fleischer, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.